Give a huge shout out to Nano and Paul for supporting me on Patreon and becoming the newest members. Thank you. Peace. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to FM Scout on YouTube. This is RDF and this video it's going to be a little entertaining. I've already taken over Reddin and what we're going to do is a little team guide. We're going to do a little training guide, develop some youth so we're going to promote some youth from the youth squad and we're just going to fit them into the first team, see what happens. We're going to have some fun with it. Also let me know if I should do a part two, if I should do another season. Maybe we can just see how far these youngsters can really go. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about Reading. They were founded in 1871. Their reputation is national, so they're not nationwide. They're not very well known. Our aim is to try and get them close to promotion. As you can see, they did get promoted in 2005, six season. They did really, really well in their first year in 2006-07, finishing in eighth place in the season. After that, though, they did get relegated, finishing in 18th place. And ever since then, it's been a tough journey. They did make a comeback in the 2011. 2012 season when they finished first in the championship but then the very next season in 2012-13 they went back down and ever since then they've struggled to find their way back up. Can we be the people to take Reading back to the premiership? We will see but we're only going to do it using the youth players. If we check we are predicted to actually finish 17th so the media has really given us no chance. Our captain for the season is Liam Moore, a very very talented player, a very very solid centre back. Our vice captain is, is Andy Yeadom, he will be our right back for the season, again he's just very solid, decent leadership and decent teamwork so already we've got good leaders in defence. Our squad personality is professional. This tells me with in training, maybe I can push them a little more without them really complaining too much. They should be able to adapt to very high intense training sessions. Their finances are okay and if we look at our budget, we have 1.8 transfer budget remaining but our wage budget is low. So what we're going to do is change it and there we go. So this gives us now the flexibility to offer our current players new contracts. Now, if we check the club vision, they want us to work within the wage budget. That should be fine. We won't be signing anyone. The reason why we won't be signing anyone is because we have a huge, huge team with lots of versatile players. Sign players to sell for a profit. Maybe we can do that next season. Maximum one-year contracts for players over the age of 34. Maximum two-year contracts for players over the age of 32 and minimum two-year contracts for first team players. At the end of the current season, we are expected to finish in the top half. That's what they want. They want us to reach the fourth round of the FA Cup and they want us to reach the third round in the EFL Cup. They've actually given us a few seasons to try and get promoted. So if we don't get promoted in the first year, it's not too bad. But we're going to try our hardest to see what we can do. If we check our facilities, we've got great training facilities and great youth facilities. That is very good for us. This gives us an opportunity to develop some of these young players alongside giving them game time. Our stadium is the Majeski Stadium. It's a 24,000 all-seater. The stadium was built in 1998. Our current stadium condition is good. We do have some under soil heating. So maybe around November, December, January, February when the weather's a bit messy. Hopefully the under soil heating can keep the pitch in good condition. And if we look at the history for a little bit, we have two Skybet championships in our trophy cabinet alongside two Skybet League 1 trophies with a Skybet League 2 trophy, one English Full Members Cup trophy and an English Third Division South trophy. That's our history, that's our honours. Maybe we can add to that, who knows, but we will try. 
Let's look at our squad depth, see where we're strong at, see where we're weak at. This way we can get an idea of a formation to use. I already have the formation in my head, I already know the tactic. So if we look at our goalkeepers, clearly Rafael is a quality goalkeeper for us at the moment. If you check his stats, he's a very, very good, very solid goalkeeper for this league. And maybe he can do a job in the top league too. Our centre backs, our current best ones is are Liam Moore, Matt Miazga, Michael Morrison, Tyler Blackett, who's also a left back, Tom McIntyre, who's going to be one of our youth prospects for the season. He's a 20-year-old centre back, current height is six foot one. He is solid, he plays short, simple passes, he doesn't take too many risks. This guy I will be pushing in the first season. He will be in my first team. So we're going to try and develop him. He will be playing alongside our leader, our captain, Liam Moore. As you can see, I've also pushed Gabriel Osho and Jerry Dorsey into the first team alongside Tom McIntyre. We should want some of these youngsters to develop and see how well they can do. For the left back position, Jordan Abita, Tyler Blackett again, Chris Gunter who's also a right back, Omar Richards who will be our left back for the season. He's a 21 year old left back. He can improve on some mentals and some technical stats, but his physical stats is very good, very solid. He gets forward and he likes to cut in from the left wing. So we're going to try and use him for the season. Also at left back, we have Omari Samuels, who's a 16 year old left back. Not the brightest, brightest talent, but I feel with some development, he could be a squad player for us. He could be a useful homegrown player. At right back, like I said, we've got Andy Yudum, Chris Gunter, Liam Moore can also fill in at right back, Philip Araruna, who will be our central midfielder for the season, Andy Renum Holter, ball winning midfielder as you can see here. We will be playing a 4 4 1, but with two DMs and a one attacking midfielder. So for that, I'm going to show you how strong we look here. Philippe Araruna, he's got one flair, 10 determination, it is not great. I must admit it's not great, but he has a high value. He's 23, he's a Brazilian if that helps. We also have Pele, a ball winning midfielder that has been loaned to us at the age of 27. He will be on the bench for us, he will be coming in. He is a solid midfielder, but I am going to prioritise Andy Renum Holter. Plus, I feel he's just a better ball winning midfielder for me. He's got the stamina, the natural fitness, so he can play week in, week out. He's good to go at the age of 22. I would like him to have a little bit more height to him. He's only 5'9", but hey, he's not going to be the perfect player. On the left-hand side of midfield, we've got a few options. This is where Redden are very versatile on the flanks. So here we have Jordan Obita, Lucas Boyer, Michael Olisi. Very, very talented youngster he's a french 17 year old we are going to try and develop him his personality is fairly ambitious he likes to run through the center and try tricks so he's a tricky player he's got the flair the dribbling first touch agility balance he is going to be a player for the future so watch out for him on the left hand side we're also going to be using Thierry Nevers. He's going to be our main option on the left hand side. A few things he would need to improve on of course, but that is why we're here. We're going to try and improve on these things. On the right hand side of midfield, Sona Luko, Yaku Mayote, Lucas Boyo again, Ayub Masika who's on loan, Gareth McClary, he won't be used much during the season. But on the right hand side, we are going to use Yaku Mayote. He's left footed only. And we are playing wingers on the right hand side. He's a very physical player. He's six foot. Physical attributes are very great. Very hard worker. He's got good work rate. Okay teamwork. His off the ball movement is not bad with high determination. He also likes to knock the ball past opponents. This will be good for us with his physical stats on the flanks. He's currently on 15 grand a week, which is fairly high for this team. He gives me hope that he will be a good player for the season. Possibly for the most interesting role is the attacking midfielder. Our current best player is John Swift. Right behind him is Michael Olise, the very good youngster. But I'm sure someone's missing here. Here we go, Ovi Egeria. This guy will be our main attacking midfielder. He's loaned from Liverpool, but he's joining us permanently at the end of the season. He's valued at 9.75 million, very high value. His current ability is great. His potential is great too. And as you can see, his technical stats, he's dribbling, his first touch, long shots, passing technique. He'll be a very key player for us. He's off the ball movement, making it hard for the defenders. And for the striker, George Pushkas is very, very talented and very good. Sam Baldock as well, alongside Lucas Zhao. 
but we are going to opt in for Danny Loder, an 18 year old, currently valued at 1.4 million. He is wanted by many, many teams alongside Arsenal, Manchester United, Tottenham. So some of the top teams in the country want him, but we are going to keep him for ourselves and we're going to try and develop him, make him a great player. His personality is a perfectionist that is very good for an 18 year old. This gives me hope in his development. We're going to try and be attacking. We're going to try and use our energy, win the ball back, be very direct in our attack. We want to exploit the spaces. I mean, we've got Nevers, we've got Maeta, and we've got Danny Lowe, very, very quick players. So we want to abuse that pace from our players. We're going to defend higher with a much higher line of engagement. We're going to engage the opposition very quickly. Get stuck in is not my preferred option, but we are going to be in a very physical league. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution with the press intensity or more urgent. So that's what we're going to go for for the season. This tactic will be downloadable for you guys too. It's RDS called Underdogs, but I've currently tweaked it a little for my Redden FC. So at the moment it's called RDS called Underdogs Redden FC. <laughs> Now we're going to get into some training, how I'm going to set my training up for the season. I set my training during pre-season. We had a very, very strong pre-season, beating Feyenoord and Herevin. So our training for our youngsters on Danny Loder, for his training, I've set his position, role, duty and advance forward. His additional focus, attack movement, which I felt was his weak link. He's off the balls on nine, decision seven, anticipation eight. I need those to be better for him to be in a better attacking than player. Intensity level on double intensity. If we check his playing style, as we can see here, he's considered a physical player. So for me, the training was out of two things, either advance forward or pressing forward. Advance forward gave me more attributes on what I actually wanted from him. So I opted for the advance forward. Another young star we're focusing on is Michael Olise. Very, very good player. This one I'm mostly excited for. He's preferred for his left foot, our personality ambitious. He's considered a technical player. So for his training, I set him for advanced playmaker alongside attacking movement because again, I feel like these mental attributes could be better. The other young star is Thierry Nevers. He's considered a physical player. So for training, I put him on winger attack, attacking movement, additional focus alongside double intensity. His mentals can be much, much better. Ovia Gera considered a technical player. So again, for a technical player, I went with advanced playmaker just to heighten those technical abilities. Additional focus on attacking movement, either attacking movement or the final third. But I went for attacking movement because I also want his anticipation to be a little better. His physicals can get better, but I'm hoping his physicals get better with age. And he's also got double intensity level. Another young star who I promoted from the under 18s is Amari Samuels. He's a left back. What we're gonna focus him on is the wing back attack with attacking movement. He's off the ball is five. We need to get that in better. He needs to be able to make forward runs and off the ball will be important for that. Omar Richards is another one. Wing back attack with the passing additional focus. Again, with the vision nine and technique nine, I feel this needs to be better, especially when we are playing from the back and we are an attacking side. They will be attempting a few risky passes and with vision nine and technique line, he may lose the ball often, so let's approve on that. Tom McIntyre. I've set him as ball playing defender with the defensive positioning and double intensity. Again, maybe he can improve on his agility and his balance, but for now I want to improve on his positioning, his marking and his decision, making him a solid defender. After that, we can improve his all round game. As you can see here, I've also promoted Jerry Dorset. He's not the most talented youngster, but again, he could be useful for us in the future as a homegrown player. We've also got Gabriel Osho, another one that can develop into a decent backup player or just a good squad player alongside Lingford Saki. <laughs> So 
So those are the coaches that I brought in. And for my training guide, this is the training guide that I'm going to help me develop these players. These are based around the balanced schedule. I've added a few more and I've tweaked it a little bit. So I've added a defensive shape, attacking movement, a defensive shape and attacking movement as the extra sessions throughout the week. This is to help us with our match preparation. I've also added a transition press on the Thursday morning. As you can see here, I am not pushing my team too much. Monday will be the most intense day, but after that it's fairly okay, it's fairly medium. We also have a two match one as well. So the aim is to develop all round attributes. So on the Monday is physical and goalkeeping, Tuesday is defending and attacking, Wednesday is possession and tactical, Thursday transition and attacking again. Attacking, I've done attacking to keep the happiness. I noticed that when you do more attacking training or even defensive training, your team generally are more happy with the training. And on Friday, we're just gonna talk about the match tactics. On Sunday, we also have a match review alongside recovery. On the two match schedule, it's basically the same. As you can see, I've gone for a more balanced approach to develop youth and we're going to see how this goes. We are going to look at my coaches and who I brought in. As you can see, I brought in Bartek, which is going to say Bartek for now. When I search for coaches and I do my staff search, as you can see, this is what was the most important for me. Determination, working with youngsters and mental. This is what I found was key for me. So these are the staff that I went for and I looked for. I signed three, which was Bartek, Eric Black, who's a decent, decent coach too, alongside Torsten Frings. Very good mental, working with youngsters. He's got a high level of discipline, determination, decent motivation. So these are the coaches I signed to help me throughout the season. I also signed a new head of development. When I was searching for him, the only thing I was searching for was mental, judging ability and judging potential. Working with youngsters, it is on 20, but that is not something that I was searching for. Working with youngsters, I don't feel that is that important in the head of youth development. It seems obvious that it should be, but I feel that working with youngsters is mostly when you're coaching youngsters. got 110 points we won the league we got promoted that is excellent stuff remember at the beginning of the season we was actually predicted to finish 17th by the media we've just blown all those expectations our top goal scorer was Yaku Maite and Danny Loda so our right winger and our youth prospect I don't want to click on his profile just yet I want to wait so I can show you his development the highest average rated player was Philip Araruna most assist was Philippe Araruna best pass completion was our goalkeeper Raphael most man of that match was Philippe Araruna so you can see how important he was as a deep line playmaker most yellow cards was our captain Liam Moore and most red cards Yaku Maite with two red cards we're just going to quickly look at the season we played 46 we won 32 and drawn 14 and we didn't lose a game all season we played our young team for most part of the season and we ended up not losing a game so that's very very good and very positive results that's very encouraging going into next season if we do a next season save so don't forget to put in the comments if you would like to see another season being played let's look at some squad stats so as you can see, Yaku Maite with 26 goals, Danny Loder also with 26 goals, and then after that it was George Pukash with 7, Lucas Zhao with 7, Lucas Boye with 7. Everyone on the team pretty much got a run out of up, apart from Jerry Dorset and Sam Baldock. But from here, this was pretty much the rotated team. As you can see, the appearances are pretty much split throughout the team. If we look at our sisters as well, Philippe Araruna, Thierry Nevers, who is our young left winger, he got a 10. John Swift, who was our rotated attacking midfielder with 10. Also, Michael Olise, Omar Richards, our left back, our young left back with five assists. Now, this is what we're all waiting for, the results of our developed players. I really feel like I should be talking about this unbeaten stuff even more, but this video is really more about the development of some of these players. So if we click Danny Loder, our first one, as you can see, he's improved a lot. His value has gone up. He is now valued at 10 million. As you can see, he is wanted. He's wanted by Man United, the biggest club in the country wants Danny Loder. Check his development, his progress throughout the season. At the start of the season, he started with two and a half stars and he ended three and a half. 
He's off the ball, he's gone up by two. His decisions have gone up by four. He's a much, much better decision maker. His anticipation has gone up by three, alongside some other minor ability changes like agility, balance, composure, positioning, vision, his marking, first touch, finishing, and dribbling. Our next person we're going to look at is Michael Olise. He's valued at 2.9 million now. He is also wanted. Let's see who he's wanted by. Arsenal, one of the biggest clubs in the country, but he's wanted by a few other clubs. If we check his progress, again, very, very good progress. His minor increases were his strength, his jumping reach, his agility, alongside his vision and off the ball and marking. He has a bigger jump in his decision making and his anticipation. Bear in mind, he only played eight games this season. So for me, that development was very good. He's an 18 year old. I didn't want to push him too, too much. We did push him in a few games. As a result, he got some very good attribute increases. He developed very well. Another promising player for the future. He could do well with the premiership in a few years. Thierry Nevers was another one. He's valued at 700K. Not the biggest value here. He is also one it is wanted by Aston Villa, Palace, Everton, West Ham, some decent clubs, some minor interest from Brighton, Newcastle and Watford. Of course, we are not going to be looking to sell him anyway, so they can be interested all they want. If we check his attribute changes, then look at that. A major overall improvement in his mental ability. His vision's gone up by two, off the ball's gone up by two, decision's gone up by three, anticipation gone up by two, his composure, concentration, positioning, his agility, dribbling, long shots, long throws, passing technique have all increased slightly too so he's improved and developed very very well in the first season with Reading 2 this just makes it all interesting what could possibly happen with another additional year or two or even three these players could be very very good players we have Omar Richards he was 21 at the time he's now 22 he's valued at 1.1 million if we check his development his progress all time he has no significant change in his overall physical ability but he has a slight overall improvement in mental and slight overall improvement in his technical ability. Potential ability is okay and there's still room for more improvement. Tom McIntyre, very solid defender. He played 35 games in the league alongside Liam Moore. They developed a very, very good partnership together. Got a lot of clean sheets together. If we check his all-time attributes, as we see here, his off the ball's actually gone up slightly, but his decision-making, his anticipation has gone up. I'm sure his positioning was 12 and it's now 13, so maybe within a few more months you will see the one next to that but he has an overall slight improvement in technical mental and physical ability imari samuels was another one a 16 year old when we first started now 17 if we check his progress all time so our youngsters at reading are progressing very very well it would be interesting to see what they do in the premiership if we decide to do that let me know in the comments if we do decide to do that It'd be interesting to see how far these players can actually go it will be interesting so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching thank you if you've been patient and watching throughout Redden did do the unbeaten season so let me know in the comments if you would like to see how far these young players can develop maybe we'll do a season in the premiership and just see what happens we'll go with the same tactic same setup and we'll see what happens please don't forget to like subscribe and comment thank you also for my patreon supporters too i love you guys i appreciate it love and peace guys see you soon